All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we have a Houston Rockets recap against the Milwaukee Bucks. Before we get into this video, guys, if you enjoy it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. 20 point loss, 126 to 106. Um, the Bucks were without Giannis, but Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton made their return. The Houston Rockets get to, I think, 10 and 21 now. This was a pretty ugly game, man. I mean, we weren't making shots. We, we weren't making shots from the field. We weren't making shots from downtown. We weren't making free throws. Um, before I get too frustrated, I'll save the free throws for a little later on in the video. Like, holy fuck, how are you so bad at free throws as a team? Uh, but anyways, you know, a lot of turnovers. Um, but, you know, the Bucks are defending champions, and I tried to mention this a lot in my stream is like, you know, I understand they were without their best player tonight, but, um, you know, we're without two starters, so keep that in mind. And we're on the road. Milwaukee's hungry to win these basketball games. They're, you know, I think, what, the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference. And, they, like I said, they won the NBA Finals last year, so they're definitely not happy. Um, it's okay, man. It is, it's definitely okay. A couple of things tonight. You know, Jay Sean Tate, man, 2 of 10 from the field. He pretty much fouled out in like 14 minutes. Um, you know, maybe I won't talk too much about Jay Sean Tate. I'm still very much thinking maybe not trade him talks, but, um, you know, I, I do think long term power forward, I, I think it's becoming a little evident that, you know, Jay Sean Tate. While he's showing flashes where he'll go like, I mean, what he dropped the other a couple of weeks ago, like 30 points, um, he'll show flashes, but uh, as far as long-term starting power forward, not only does he not really kind of fit our timeline, but um, I mean, he just, he's such a bad shooter, man. He's such a bad shooter that I don't know that surrounding him with guys like KPJ and Jalen Green, I don't know if he's necessarily the best fit for those two players. So Moving on, Christian Wood, man, he's been getting aggressive, and I absolutely love it. I mean, I absolutely love it. 20 points, 11 rebounds tonight for him, 6 of 13 from the field. Brutal 06 from downtown. He's shooting uh, like 34% from downtown this season. 8 of 11 from the free throw line, which is really, really reassuring. So I'm watching the game tonight. I'm streaming it on the main channel, and um, I saw a stat. So basically, I made a video about Christian Wood today. A lot of you guys probably saw that. And I was kind of talking about possibly trading him because, you know, I don't view him as a long-term power forward. I don't view him as a long-term center. I think there's a bunch of issues defensively with putting him at the center position. And I'm just thinking like, you know, I like him, but his added, you know, his heart doesn't seem to be in Houston anymore. Um, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't think he fits the timeline. He seems to be growingly frustrated as the season is progressing, as I'm sure a lot of the Rocket players are. But you got to keep in mind, man, Christian Wood came to this organization assuming he was playing with James Harden, assuming he was playing with Russell Westbrook, P.J. Tucker, Eric Gordon, competing for the NBA Finals. So, um, as far as Christian Wood coming back to Houston, I would imagine you're going to have to pay him a lot of money. So since he's on one of the most team-friendly contracts in the entire NBA for a borderline all-star like he is, I think you might start. I think I think we should start talking or at least like getting our brains okay with the fact that you know a trade might be in our best scenario. Because the thing is, I love Christian Wood. He was a huge, huge force last season and we'll always remember it, but I just don't know if it's the best fit anymore. But I saw a statistic and I'm watching it, watching the game, I'm you know live streaming it and I saw a stat obviously he's shooting like 57% from the free throw line in the season. I think maybe now he might be at 58. Uh, there was a little anecdote, a little stat line behind his 58% free throw shooting, and it said worst in the NBA. And um, for some reason, I didn't fact check that before tonight. But if that is true and Christian Wood is shooting the worst free throw percentage in the entire NBA, um, that is extremely alarming. And as he mentioned and alluded to earlier in the season, all of his free throw struggles are mental. It's not mechanical. It's mental. I don't want a mental head case on the free throw line I, I really don't understand how he is struggling so much from the free throw percentage um but the whole team is and it's 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 spreading like a virus right now man i mean 67 percent from the free throw line tonight it's like this every single game and it's 
it's contagious, man. And it's not like it's just Christian Wood who's having a bad free throw percentage season. It just adds up, man. You had one from Garrison Matthews tonight, one from Eric Gordon, one from Noabo, two from Shangun. They just add up. Like, it's just adding up. And you look at the team like the Bucks tonight who shot, what was it, 95% from the free throw line? Let, I'm going to just double check this for you guys. 91% from the free throw line. It's like the Rockets missed out on possibly 10 points. Let's say they made seven of those 10 that they missed out and they shot a similar stat line to the Milwaukee Bucks. You're looking at like seven to eight points right there. I mean, maybe not in this specific game that would have played a part, but like, I mean, you're just putting, you're missing so many points. Like, it's just so frustrating. Because um, the thing about the Houston Rockets is they lead the league in free throw attempts. So if you're leading the league in free throw attempts and you're struggling this much, it just is cause for concern. I do want to talk about positives, though. Um, unfortunately, none of them really came in the starting lineup except for Christian Wood, like I had mentioned. Uh, first off, Shangun, very good stat line for him tonight. 10 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists. Um, he did have 4 turnovers. He did have 2 uh, personal fouls as well. I mean, they don't, the, the league calls Shengun's fouls. I feel like it's biased. I don't want to get in like a little bit of a rant here, um, but I just feel like they officiate him differently and it doesn't make any sense. Like it just, it really doesn't make any sense. So the good news is Shengun had a good night tonight offensively. Um, defensively, you know, he's still getting there. He's still okay, but he's still getting there. I think nights like this where if you're actually watching the games, you, you do realize like, all right, maybe Shangun isn't uh, necessarily ready to start 25 minutes every single night in that lineup or, you know, he's, he's capable, he could, uh, but maybe it's not the best option. Moving on from him, we saw KJ Martin. This kid is so fun to watch. I mean, KJ is literally so fun to watch. 12 points, six rebounds, or for, sorry, five rebounds, six assists for KJ tonight, 31 minutes really really interested to see what his minutes look like when kpj comes back later on in the week and Jalen green comes back tomorrow i'm very intrigued to see what happens to kj minutes because early on in the season he was not really playing much and it didn't make much sense um from what because what we saw last year i mean he was averaging like 17 and 7 in his last couple of starts so Good to see KJ Martin get a lot of run recently, keeps putting up double digit point numbers, and obviously he can rebound and he can pass, so he can do a lot of things. He's very fun, he's very explosive. Um, still working on the dribble, still working on the dribble, but hopefully he gets there. Josh Christopher, uh, nine points, five rebounds, four assists, not, not a good shooting night, but like I said, it wasn't really a good shooting night for any of the Rocket players. Outside of that, not you know, we're not really looking at much. David Huaba, I guess, did a little bit for nine points for him, but. Uh, probably going to make a video on David Nwaba tomorrow because kind of Balin brought it to my attention where it's like, you know, David Nwaba doesn't really seem like he serves a purpose on this team that much or especially long term. Maybe should have gone with Sterling Brown over David Nwaba, but uh, if I'm a contending team, especially like the Nets who we took him from, I would want Dave Nwabo, who isn't an offensive liability anymore, and he can also just play, like, he's one of the best perimeter defenders in the league, like, one of the most consistent perimeter defenders in the entire league. So I would want to make a trade for Dave Nwabo if I'm a contending team. I wouldn't mind him on my Chicago Bulls. So that's it for today, guys. Another, you know, same as the other day, uh, another little bit of a depressing or recap video. I hate doing these uh, when they're blowout losses, but hopefully... Jalen Green comes back tomorrow, drops like 30 points, which I would not be surprised, and we can get back in that winning circle. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys later.